Leo Kiggins, United States Army, World War II. Leo was the first veteran of Omaha Beach D-Day that I interviewed for my documentary series, which I started almost 20 years ago. I interviewed Leo here in town where I live in Colorado on February 13, 2003. Leo passed away five years later at the age of 87. I was fortunate to speak at his graveside service. And he's one of my heroes, absolutely one of my heroes. And I'm so proud to honor him today. Today is June 6, by the way. 2022. So I'm honoring Leo on the anniversary, 78th anniversary of D-Day. Um, I have actually been to France three times, been on that holy ground called Omaha Beach and walked the sands of Omaha Beach where Leo landed on June 6th as a young man. And Leo is representative of all the veterans I've interviewed, all the, of the greatest generation and his story is so close to my heart. And Leo served with the 336th Engineer Combat Battalion and he tells a great story and he was part of the 5th Engineer Special Brigade. And I'd like to thank the family of Clifford Hagen. This interview, this story is being brought to you by the family of Clifford Hagen in honor of Clifford Hagen who served with Leo in the 336th Engineer Combat Battalion on D-Day. And Clifford was part of the United States Army Company C. So from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, God bless you, the Hagen family. Mary, thank you. I salute all of you for making this story possible. And I'm just gonna take a little extra time today on this introduction because today is D-Day. Like I said, the World War II veterans are the first love of my work. And I started my work almost 20 years ago in Arizona. I live in Colorado. And I found a bunch of snowbirds down there and the rest is history. When I watched Saving Private Ryan, in 1997, 1998, something shook loose inside of me and my focus became D-Day. And I knew I wanted to interview these veterans, so, so a few years later, I found the real people. I didn't want just Hollywood actors, I wanted to go to the source. And when I started my documentary series, I said two things have to happen. The stories have to come from the source, and secondly, the day's gonna come when I'm gonna share these stories with our younger generation, which I've done. I've spoken to over 100,000 students across this country in schools, over 100 schools, and bringing them the history. They, they don't know what freedom is because they've always been free. They've been born in a free country. So I challenge our young people today with stories like Leo Kiggins. And uh, you know, freedom is not free, folks. And we're fighting today for the same freedoms in our own country that our veterans fought for on a foreign land. And so there's a special significance and meaning of today being June 6th. I've got both my flags flying outside proudly. But Leo, God bless you. He was a staff sergeant with the 336th Engineer Combat Battalion and he was discharged in 1945 from the military and worked here in, locally in Colorado. And I salute you and your family, Leo, on this day, on D-Day, and all the D-Day veterans I've interviewed over the years, there's a lot of them. And uh, most of them are gone now, if not all of them, and it's very bittersweet, but I'm proud to bring you Leo's story on behalf of all the stories. And Leo is featured in my first film called Omaha Beach D-Day. It's a popular video on YouTube, so I invite you to watch that too, and I'll put the link in the video description. So I think that's about it. I'm proud to bring to you my complete interview with Leo Kiggins in 2003. I hope you are blessed by it and you can share it. And I say happy D-Day to all my veterans and we will never forget. God bless you. explain where you were and what your unit was and oh just start now yeah. start now yeah. and what you did yes well I, I was with the 336th engineer combat battalion and our assignment was going in with the 29th infantry division and the 1st infantry division uh, giving support and uh, uh, help, help with them uh, Omaha didn't go well. It uh, the Germans had a great ad advantage over us. Uh, they occupied higher ground with vegetation for their concealment, and we the invaders was just put out on the open, empty, uh, open beach. Uh, often. Uh, our, our, our initial task was to uh, 
demolition and destroy the uh, obstacles that the Germans had spent many, many months creating quite a, quite a barrier of, of obstacles for vehicles and landing craft. Mm -hmm. And it was our, our assignment to blow them up, destroy these obstacles, so that our own equipment could come, could come in and uh, go beyond the beach and to the higher ground and to the interior of France. Uh, the uh, our, our, our casualties were were heavy, and I I felt a little bitter about not being able to get the wounded back to the hospital ship, which was quite a ways off. We just didn't have the landing craft to provide that facility of uh, of getting the wounded off the beach and and back to the hospital ship where better care could be uh, provided. Sure. Uh, tell, tell them to... Uh, tell them into the landing craft and your thoughts and, and, and as you uh, traveled to the beach. Uh, we were on a, a larger ship several miles out, out uh, away from the beach, uh, a, a troop ship. And then the smaller landing craft would come to the troop ship and, and pick us up. Uh, it, uh, we'd been through this in maneuvers before. It was pretty routine, and we never thought much about it. Uh, uh, this one landing, cra landing craft that took us in uh, was uh, LCI, Landing Craft Infantry. It didn't carry any vehicles, only personnel. And uh, we had nets over the side of the troop ship. We'd climb down and, and board the landing craft. Uh, at that point, that far out, we weren't under any German fire. As we approached the beach in the landing craft, the Germans, the Germans fired on any approach to, to the beach. And, uh, a lot of landing craft were being lost. Uh, we uh, we came in at high tide. Uh, yet uh, and at that point there was kind of a lull in German German firing, and we got ashore all right. Uh, I, uh, I I remember we talked about it, uh, the difficulty of uh, getting off the landing craft. Uh, we, the water was deep, and uh, we had inflated rubber rubber belts that we were able to uh, get. Uh, through the deep water and in, onto the beach itself. And at that time, it was about 12 noon b b before we, uh, before I got ashore. And most of the German, most of the German uh, small arms, rifle fire, machine gun fire had been eliminated. But we were still getting German artillery continually and intermittently still getting uh, f from their artillery positions located further in. They, they, uh, they give us quite an afternoon of, of harassment and we had increasing casualties and men that should have been taken off the beach, badly wounded, uh, but they never made it. We j Uh, well, on the troop ship, which was several miles out, uh, away from the beach, uh, we, we boarded the smaller landing craft to approach the beach. And uh, that, that, that took almost an hour. They didn't travel very fast. And we, we, we discussed uh, that there, there, there wasn't much at that point, we weren't under any intense German fire, 
And we didn't think it was just a routine thing uh, up to uh, until we got on the beach. Uh, we uh, we were able to uh, start working. We landed on the wrong part of the beach for one thing. We had about two and a half, three miles to go to get to our, our uh, to get to our assigned area. And uh, the, the Germans, with their uh, was watching all every move we made. Uh, and control their artillery fire on us. Uh, eventually, later in the afternoon, we we reached our assigned area, and to start clearing the landmines, the Germans had a the whole area was pretty well saturated with landmines. Uh, which were uh, effective to a point, and it took time to clear them. And we had some casualties doing that. Um, yeah, have, them, have them talk about the casualties. Right. <clears throat> well, uh, after leaving the landing craft and, g and getting on the beach, uh, I was a skeptic. I, I, uh, looking around and the situation, it was, it was impossible to really describe the chaos, the debris, the wrecked equipment, and the wounded, and the dead. The wounded and the dead was an awesome sight. Uh, but we were thinking of our own survival, too, and our assignment to, that uh, we were brought in for to clear the mines and uh, yet uh, the Germans had a real advantage over us. They had concealment in, in, in the vegetation and on the higher ground above the beach. They had a great advantage over us where we were simply put out on the open, open sand. There was no concealment we were in full view of the German gunners, and uh, it uh, often our assignment to blow these op obstacles. We would have to get take cover right behind the very ones we were supposed to destroy. Uh, it uh, it made things go slower than what we had anticipated. Uh, Later, uh, later in the afternoon, the Germans had a problem. They began to run out of artillery ammunition, and the firing did let up a little. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, 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 it didn't look good. I was a little bitter about not getting the wounded off the beach. They needed professional help back on the hospital ship, which they weren't getting. And uh, it... Uh, uh, it it really didn't go well uh, until late late in the afternoon. Uh, the, the the situation improved. Here, ask him. No, w w we were not getting in getting any information back off the beach. Uh, uh, the uh, the early landing initial landings was around six a.m at low tide, low tide so that the obstacles would be above the water and could be demolitioned and destroyed. Uh, but back on, back on the troop ship and waiting our turn to get in, which was uh, delayed several hours, uh, we, we weren't getting any information. It, it wasn't going well, but we, we weren't being told that. Uh, it, it, uh, this one landing craft that did come in had quite a few wounded on that they uh, that we lifted off off the landing craft onto the troop ship get a little better care for them and safety uh, but uh, but we had no idea well, what we were getting into and and, and a serious doubtful doubtful outcome of the thing. Okay. 
one more time now. Um, uh, our group came in on an LCI, Landing Craft Infantry. Uh, some of the, many of the landing craft would carry both personnel and vehicles, a light tank, jeeps, artillery pieces, but this type of landing craft, LCI, was for personnel only. And uh, they, they carried several hundred men. Uh, they were in quarter down, down inside the hold, and we were a lot of us up on top, on, on the top deck. Uh, which included myself, uh, get a could get a good view, and uh, it 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 was a typical landing craft. Uh, we were all familiar with it. We'd had maneuvers with it, and uh, it, uh, it it's not a high speed craft. It took quite a few minutes for us to uh, reach the beach. Ask them. Did no, you have the, a Higgins? The, uh, the, uh, these Higgins craft uh, with the ramp that uh, the whole front end of the landing craft dropped down, and if it was if there were troops aboard, then they run out across it, or uh, a vehicle would drive out across it, uh, and both both men and on foot. Soldiers on foot, and jeeps, light tanks, artillery pieces were, were on these landing craft with, with the ramp that dropped down, and then they just drove out onto the sand. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but but the LCI was different. Uh, they had two, they had two catwalks, or two, two walkways on on the front of the ship, one on each side of the bow. And they would extend out and drop down, and uh, that that was our exit path to, to for leaving the landing craft and getting on the beach. Okay, yeah, I think I know what he's talking about now. Attention to it; it was their problem, the Navy. <laughs> but uh, the, the the landing craft had some difficulty getting back to sea, but. We were pretty well occupied with our own survival and and uh, trying to move uh, down to the area where we belonged. And uh, later, later, uh, American Navy Na Navy uh, ships with the larger guns come in close and had direct fire. That that was a great help to us. You mean uh, on the troop ship? No, it, no, after they landed. After you landed. Oh, uh, after we landed. After you landed. What was the hardest thing for you or for the others to deal with? What was the hardest part of that? Uh, after we landed, uh, there, there was very little German small arms fire. But their artillery, their artillery was... Con going continually and intermittently, uh, that was our, our biggest problem. Uh, we could hear the shells coming in, we'd uh, lay on the sand and, and hope and pray that, uh, but, uh, but, but that was the worst thing, that German, the German artillery harassed us all afternoon. And uh, we were concerned about that, uh, our, our own survival, and the need to get down to the area where we were assigned to clear the mines and have build roadways uh, off the beach into the interior. Okay, okay. Ask him. Uh, going back... Of course, everything was different, cleaned up very neatly. The cemetery, it was a beautiful spot. Uh, over, initially the cemetery contained about 14,000 graves, a large one, and it was being well cared for. And I was uh, impressed with the, 
with the uh, with the planning and and the uh, and the monuments that were e erected, uh, it would look very appropriate. And uh, one thing that struck us was the empty sea all summer long on D uh, on 1944. Uh, the, the the area the sea was full of ships, and now going back it was empty. It was quite a contrast. I, rem I remember that. Uh, but but the cemetery, well cared for and uh, as it should be. It, uh, it, the conventional cemeteries, uh, the, the, the dead buried are facing east. Mm -hmm. But in the military cemetery, they were placed facing west, looking towards their homeland. I thought that was a... I, I didn't... I wasn't aware of this until... Well, the... Uh, the invasion was the beginning of the end for Germany, and uh, but it was many months of hard fighting. After the invasion, the Germans fought well. They had excellent equipment, and uh, the the war continued on during the summer of 1944 and into the winter of 44 and 45. Uh, the, 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 it, uh, the Germans continued fighting right up to the very last, and uh, of course the casualties, uh, new cemeteries had to be built. It, uh, well, yes, today's generation, uh, they, uh, today's generation, the world is continually having problems, threats of war, wars, wars that have been, had been fought uh, since then. And uh, the present generation, uh, they're more occupied with the current events, which, uh, which involves war and the military, our fighting units, our are still being maintained, and so that they haven't had much time to think back. Uh, but World War II was a war that had to be fought. It, uh, the uh, the Nazi government that represented Germany uh, was cruel. Uh, the Jewish situation, and uh, uh, the war had to be fought. But but the present generation, they don't feel the impact, or they don't think too much about that. Uh, there's uh, the the current the current world situation is is not in excellent condition. There's areas where there's still fighting going on, and that occupies the the youth of today, of. Uh, what's going to happen now or tomorrow. But looking back 50, 60 years ago to the Omaha and to the Utah Beach or the, or the Normandy campaign, uh, it's, it's gone. Uh, we achieved uh, a remarkable thing there, C captured, captured the beach, and uh, uh, went on into the uh, area countries of Belgium and Holland, and and eventually brought by the brought about the defeat of the German of the German army. That's good. That was good. You were talking about talking about the Germans having the high ground. Uh, yes. No place to hide. No place to hide. Go ahead. Are we ready? Well, the Germans had a real advantage over us. They occupied higher ground uh, above the beach. 
they had elevation above the beach and vegetation for their concealment. Whereas we, leaving the landing craft, had nowhere to go but the open, empty, sandy beach. There was, there was no protection, impossible to dig a hole in the wet sand, a foxhole. The Germans had a real advantage. Uh, they were on familiar territory. They had many months previously to prepare defense positions. And, but the main thing, they occupied the higher ground all along Omaha, and they were looking down on us, and they were, and they had concealment, vegetation. Mm -hmm. okay. It, uh, it uh, contributed to our casualties. Our, our, uh, it wasn't until we penetrated inland that we were able to take advantage of cover like they had. Okay. And now the cemetery, the cemetery is beautifully done. Uh, the, the large memorial at the east end of the cemetery con contains a, a long circular wall of the men that are missing. Uh, there was one over 1,500 men unaccounted for. Uh, they never got their deserved place in the beautiful cemetery or never had a chance to be brought back home. Gone, over 1,500. Uh, it's uh, a sad thing, but, the, but their names are on this wall.